Well, hello everyone and welcome to, do, to today's webcast, Designing Better Products with Katia's Engineering Optimizer Workbench. I am pleased to introduce our speaker today, Senior Technical Training Engineer at RAN3D, Yuri Apanovich. So Yuri, I will pass things over to you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so let's get started without wasting too much time. So the topic of today's presentation, as Karin said, uh, it's called Designing Better Products with Katia's Engineer Optimizer. And we're going to take a look into a pretty obscure workbench, which could come quite handy in uh, many real life scenarios. And it's called Product Engineer Optimizer Workbench. So what is this all about? Hold on a second. OK, yeah. Uh, it's all about uh, making the products better. And uh, the promise is that you can uh, explore design alternatives and find reasonable compromises and trade-offs. You can improve product quality and reduce costs, uh, finding the best solution, uh, reduce number of design iterations to improve productivity, get a better design in shorter time, and so on and so forth. Uh, being engineers, we all know that um, many of that stuff can be done uh, manually. Uh, and uh, if you work in the industry for a substantial period of time, you pretty much have a good idea already as to, you know, how to improve the products. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. And uh, what this workbench offers is that you can actually ask the software to ask the best solution, the best combination of dimensions for you. And uh, it's, it's called optimization. Uh, so when you try to set up an optimization, you got to keep in mind there are certain components or ingredients involved. And uh, first of all, you need to define uh, the objective. Uh, this could be many things. It could be, let's say, you want to make your product lighter. Um, you want to improve other per performance characteristics and aspects and so on and so forth. And uh, also, you also need to pick what is called free parameters, which are also called design variables, design parameters. Uh, these are the dimensions and parameters that would be varied uh, during the optimization phase. Uh, in many cases, you also uh, use design constraints. Uh, these are certain limitations on the design. A simple example might be, uh, okay, you want to minimize the weight of a load bearing part and you don't want the stress to exceed the strength of the material, that becomes a design constraint. And uh, certainly you need to establish certain relations between those, uh, how free parameters affect the design constraints and your objective or goal function. And uh, what happens, the software itself automatically uh, is going to adjust free parameters in order to achieve the objective or best uh, achieve the obje objective while working with the design constraints. It could be many uh, different scenarios. I'll show you a few. And uh, it involves creating some parameters, creating the optimization objects, writing optimization, and so on. And uh, I'm going to start with the first uh, scenario, which is very, very typical for mechanical engineers working in many different industries, such as aerospace, automotive, where the weight is critical and you want to make your part as light as possible. And at the same time, you don't want the part to break. So the objective that becomes the uh, mass of the part, and uh, you want to minimize the mass of the part to make it lighter. Uh, the design variables, so these are now uh, part dimensions such as thickness, radius, hole diameter, and other things. And uh, you need to set up a relation uh, which is uh, will compute the mass uh, with a measure function based on the dimensions of the part. Now, uh, because it's a load bearing part, you also need to consider a constraint, which is the maximum stress must be within the yield strength of the material. And uh, the relation in this case is a finite element analysis. So it's kind of like a black box. Uh, it's not some kind of a mathematical formula you can write down on a napkin or a piece of paper. Uh, it's a black box. So let's see how it all works. Okay. I'm going to go into CATIA. Okay, so that's the model, the bracket you've seen uh, on the page. And uh, I did set up a finite element and simulation for this bracket. Okay, you see there are uh, 
the holes on the backs are fix, fi fixed, and there's a vertical load applied on the larger holes. So the amount of vertical load, uh, let me check it out. Uh, what is it? About 1,000 newtons, about 100 kilos. Uh, so the analysis I run it already, and uh, let's check out the results. You see there is a one Mises stress uh, plot. I can animate it. You see the bracket deforms. And the maximum stress is 341 megapascal. Let's see if it exceeds the yield uh, strength of the material. So the function is called information. And uh, basically, it gives me the maximum value for the stress. And uh, as you see, the yield strength of the material is 250 megapascal. So in other words, uh, the bracket as it is right now is not strong enough. And uh, we need to make some kind of a design change. Well, I could try to do it manually, you know, change in thickness, uh, maybe change in other dimensions and so on. But I'm going to try to ask the software to come up with the best possible solution for me. The lightest uh, bracket possible and yet strong enough to hold the uh, specified load. Well, to do that, I need to set up those things we were talking about, okay? So I need to set up the objective, I need to pick the free parameters, and I need to set up the design constraint. So it all involves creating the parameters, and I'm going to create a parameter which will be the factor of safety for this bracket, and also another parameter which is the mass. I'll deactivate this. So the first parameter I wanted to create would be uh, the factor of safety. I'm going to create what is called global sensor, and it's a maximum uh, one Mises stress, uh, which will effect effectively monitor the maximum stress in the model. So you see 340.5 megapascal. And I'm going to create a new parameter now. Okay, This would be a type real because it's a factor of safe, uh, safety. It doesn't have units. I'll call it factor of safety and uh, add a formula. So the factor of safety is the yield strength of the material divided by the maximum stress. Now I'm going to scroll up. You see there is a material applied on the part and I'm gonna click on the uh, material. And uh, here is the yield strength. And it should be divided by the maximum stress, which is this value. I'm gonna click on it. And this is my formula. Okay, so right now if I check out, indeed you see the factor of safety is 0.7, which tells me uh, this part is not strong enough to hold the specified load. So that's something that you all will be using as a design constraint. And I'll create a second parameter which will monitor the mass of the bracket, the weight. Okay, so same thing. Now it should be. Uh, the mass type of a parameter, and I'm going to call it total mass, for instance. Click Add Formula, and uh, uh, the formula editor it has a lot of different functions, and I'm going to use this one. You see, there's a part measures, which actually lets me measure the volume of the part, of uh, the area if needed and also get some other information. So the total mass would be the volume times the material density. All right, so smart volume, and I'm gonna select the part body, and uh, times, now I need to find the material density, which is right here, and it's right there, okay? Hit okay, hit okay, and uh, yeah, so right now it is uh, 0 0.05 kilograms approximately. I can change the units if I needed to. I'll leave it as is. Okay, so that's my parameters uh, prepared for the optimization. Okay, and uh, now I need to switch to the optimizer workbench. Uh, it belongs to the domain of the knowledge where. And here is your product engineering optimizer. Okay, uh, there are several tools in here that's uh, most typically used. It's called optimization. Uh, another one is design of experiments, which is like running virtual what if scenarios. And the third tool is called constraint satisfaction tool. So we're going to use this one. So here is the setup. Okay, 
optimization type, it could be minimization, maximization, target value. Uh, if it's only constrained, that would be a feasibility study. So I want to minimize the weight of this bracket. I'm going to click select. And here is the total mass. Okay, so right now it is, what is it, uh, 0 0.05 kilograms. Now here I need to select which parameters I want to vary, which dimensions. And uh, to keep it simple, I'll just use uh, the thickness of the part as one of the parameter, and the second one is the band radius. So I'm going to hit edit list. Okay, I'm going to put a filter on the sheet metal parameter. Okay, so I'll be optimizing the thickness and also the band radius. Okay, now let me expand it so we can see the setup more clearly. Okay, I also need to set up the ranges, which is like a upper and lower bounds or limits for the, for the dimensions. Okay, so right now the thickness is two millimeter and uh, I wanna try to vary it within certain uh, range. So INF is inferior, which is lower value. And let's say I'm going to start with one millimeter and possibly all the way to 10 millimeters. Okay, so that sets up the, up the range uh, which will be explored during the optimization. Okay, and for the band radius, same stuff. So right now it's four millimeters and I'll be varying between three and let's say eight millimeters. Okay, so minimization total mass, these are parameters to be varied and uh, I need to set up a constraint. So for the constraint, I wanna make sure that my factor of safety is uh, greater than 1.1, uh, which gives me a bit of a, you know, a margin of safety uh, accounting for variability in material properties and uh, things like that. I'm gonna click new, okay, and I'll select this. 1.1. So right now it tells me the distance to satisfaction is 0.36 and uh, you see this is red which means right now this constraint is violated and um, that's exactly the case. You see the requirement is to have factor of safety uh, above 1.1 and right now it's 0.73. Well, let's go back to the problem definition. Uh, we're just pretty much going down the uh, options and picking those up. Uh, there are several algorithms uh, possibly used. Some of them are gradient based. Uh, the most commonly used is simulating and annealing algorithm. I'll leave it there, Swiss. Uh, this is convergence speed. It's a simple model, so I'll keep it as fast. And uh, these are termination criteria, maximum number of iterations or updates, consecutive updates without improvements. I think 50 should be enough. Okay, uh, maximum time, five minutes should be good enough. Save optimization data. Yeah, so good. So now there is a button run optimization. I'm going to click it. It's going to ask me where you want to save your log. And I'm um, going to select that. Call it log. Uh, it's an optimization log or uh, log file. And Katia starts doing its magic. Okay. So it actually starts varying those parameters, uh, which is uh, band radius and thickness, uh, trying to come up with the best possible solution, which is um, the stress should be below the yield, factor of safety greater than 1.1. And uh, at the same time, make the bracket as light as possible. See, so it shows me the iterations, how it's progressing. Um, as you might guess, uh, if the model was more complex, uh, each update, each iteration would take longer time. But for the purposes of this uh, presentation, I kind of tried to keep it simple and quick. So right now it's on update number 16. Uh, the maximum is 50. Let's see what it can do in 50 iterations for us. It should take under five minutes for sure. Okay, so that's number 20. 
so it doesn't show the updates. Uh, if uh, I might have asked if I needed to to update the model as uh, it goes through the iterations, uh, but it would just add to the computation time. I didn't want to do that. I'll show you this update on a different example. For now, let's just wait. So 30 iterations out of 50. Okay, yeah, I'm getting there. So 34 shows me elapsed time, which is right now about two minutes, just under two minutes. That should be another maybe a minute or so. Okay, getting close, 41. Computation status. Yeah, one thing I wanted to mention, that's an example where the relationship between uh, the constraint, which is maximum stress and dimensions is like a black box. Uh, you cannot describe it using any kind of a simple equation or formula. You actually need to set up the finite element simulation as I did. Okay, so I think we're almost there. Okay, uh, let's check it out. Uh, I can go now into computation results. These are all the iterations listed. Okay. And uh, ideally, I don't want to look into iterations or attempts in which constraint was violated. So instead of all, I'm going to pick up the filter and all constraints satisfied only. Okay. So now you can see through the iterations how the total mass was changing. Okay, and uh, at the bottom, we see the lightest possible is uh, uh, 0 0.069. That's the best solution it was able to find. Uh, what about other dimensions? Well, I can look it up. Okay, so basically, you see the optimal thickness for the bracket was 2.74 millimeters, and the band radius is 3 millimeters. Now, the default was 4 millimeters, but it turns out that 3 millimeters is the best. Uh, I can also visualize it uh, as curves. So I'm going to select parameters. Okay, and I want to visualize the total mass and uh, also thickness and band radius. Okay, now when I click show curves, Okay, so basically it shows me how it was changing dimensions along the way. So if I look at the total mass, okay, that's a yellow graph. Initially it went up, but then it gradually, gradually was creeping down until it find the best possible solution. Uh, if I click on another one, that was the thickness. Uh, again, it kind of came up with the converse solution. So I can actually see what was going on. And uh, if I want to apply, uh, a certain dimensions from this list. Let's say I want to keep this uh, design. I can hit apply values to parameters. So it actually applies these to uh, all my uh, dimensions in the model and so on. And as you see, the factor of safety is now 1.14, which is above 1.1, which is what I requested. And the total mass just slightly over uh, 0 0.05 initially. Uh, but that's kind of the best solution the software was able to find. Okay, so that's my first example, and I'm going to show a couple of more. Uh, that's an example where you actually use finite element simulation to uh, as a sort of function or relationship uh, between parameters and uh, uh, measures. The second example I'm going to do is I want to set up an optimization uh, problem to uh, improve the design of a windshield wiper. So the objective in this case becomes that I want to maximize the wiped area. Uh, design variables, these are all kinds of dimensions, arm length, blade length, etc. The relation between the two would be a formula, is a wiped area expressed through the design variables. And uh, when optimizing this design, I want to make sure that the minimum distance between the blade and the windshield edges must be maintained. And that becomes design constraint. So again, as you see, we have all 
necessary ingredients here, which is we've thought of uh, objective. Uh, we've decided on the three parameters or design variables, uh, and also figure out what kind of constraint we want. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Uh, this is not going to be fun at element simulation, so it's much faster. Actually, I don't need this one anymore. I'll close it up. Okay, and uh, that's the model I'll be using. It's a conceptual model. Okay, and uh, uh, the windshield is modeled as a surface. That the surface, kind of the dark uh, surface, the white area also modeled as surfaces. And I got a bunch of parameters set up here, uh, which I will be using to try to figure out the best possible design. So uh, it's all parameterized. So for instance, if I change the arm length, uh, right now it's 250. If I change it to 200, you see the model changed. Okay, I'll undo it and I'll make a couple other changes. Let's say I want to change the blade length. Okay, the model changed again. So I'm not discussing how to create those parameters. We uh, actually teach those uh, topics in our classes. at a knowledge advisor, uh, as well as with some basic modeling classes. But uh, the key is you got to prepare your model. So I'm not done yet because I need to set up more parameters, which is the uh, design uh, or objective or a goal. And I'll set up uh, a parameter which will calculate the percentage of the wiped area with relation to the total area of the windshield. Okay, I'm going to go in here, and uh, that would be a parameter of type real, no units. And uh, I'm going to call it wiped area percentage. So that's going to be area of the wiped area divided by the total area times 100. Okay, so in the measures, you see there's a bunch of functions to actually measure the area. So that's the one I want to use. And the first area will be the wiped area, okay, divided by another area. So again, I'm using the uh, area function. And now this is the windshield area times 100. Okay, that gives me percentage. Uh, yeah, that's all good. It tells me that it needs updates. So right now you see this is about 45%, just over 45%. So I'm going to try to improve it. Now I also need to create a parameter which will monitor the distance between the wiped area, which is the green surface, and the boundary of this windshield, okay? And I'm gonna create another one. It's, this is length. And I'll kind of call it distance to edge. So now that's gonna be the distance function. Okay, you see there is a distance. And the distance will be measured between the wiped area and the boundary you see this white line going around the perimeter okay so pretty much the preparation is done uh, so my goal is to increase or maximize this value which is the percentage of the wiped area and at the same time i want to make sure that the distance to edge should be greater than 10 millimeters for instance all right so switching to uh, the optimizer workbench, okay, and create a new optimization. So in this case, it's not a minimization. Actually, I want to maximize something. And what I want to maximize would be this parameter. It's wiped area percentage. Okay, again, I got to select which parameters I want to vary. I'm going to click edit list and uh, in this case I'll be working with five parameters which is the arm length, uh, blade length, uh, blade angle, start angle and uh, end angle. Okay. Same as before I need to 
assign the ranges and limits. I'm going to go one after another. Okay, so for this one, uh, for the arm length, I'll be working between 200 and 270. How do I figure out the limits? Well, you want to stay your, your parameters to stay within some reasonable uh, common sense limits. So the model regenerates uh, and so on. So blade length, okay, I'm going to be varying it from 200 to 300. So again, what I'm trying to avoid is that the model simply fails if I uh, change those parameters completely off the wall. Okay, and that's going to be, let's say, between 10 and 30. And a couple more, so angle start. And uh, let's say I'm going to be working between 20 and 30. And the last one is going to be between 50 and 80. Okay, uh, constraints. So the constraint will be that the distance should be greater than 10 millimeters. And this is the parameter that measures the distance. So I'm going to click U, uh, distance to edge, and it should be more than 10 millimeters. So what constraint means is that uh, if there is an update or iteration in which constraint is violated, that attempt or that iteration is uh, ignored. Uh, it's not accepted. So algorithm type, simulation, annealing. I'm going to use medium. Uh, it's kind of more accurate. Uh, maximum number of updates. Uh, let's say I'm going to make 500. This is pretty quick model. And maximum time, let's say 10 minutes. I want to save optimization data. Uh, now this one we're going to run with visualization update because I want to show you how the model changes as you proceed, uh, or rather this, as, as uh, the software proceeds with optimization. Click Run, and uh, see there is a setup for this, and I'm going to call it, uh, let's say, wiper log, OK? It creates a file and it starts running the iterations. Okay, you can see now actually on the screen what kind of attempts, what kind of tries it makes. So it goes through, you see the green areas moving back and forth. So it tries to come up with the best combination of parameters to maximize the white area percentage. So right now we see it's about 65%, which is a lot better than it used to be, just over 45%. Okay, let it finish its work. Yeah, it should be pretty quick. Yeah, it, because it's just a simple formula that links uh, dimensions to the uh, goal and constraint. There's not some kind of a finite element simulation which takes longer time. Uh, it runs pretty fast, so that's why I said, okay, go ahead and try up to 500 uh, different updates, uh, different uh, combinations. Pretty close, 460, 460. Yeah, almost done. Okay, so sometimes you can get this message unable to restore the best solution, which means it was not able to apply uh, the best parameters, which you can do ourselves. So if I check computation results, uh, again, typically you don't want to see uh, where constraints have been violated. So you select all constraints satisfied. And the best solution is typically found at the bottom. So we started with about 45% and we managed, or rather that software managed to come up with a combination of dimensions, uh, which gives yeah, quite substantially better value, which is over 66%.
you know, real life, you of course you would want this number to be even greater. So if I want to apply this dimension, select apply values to parameters. And uh, if I want to see how it was changing the white area percentage, I'll just use this curve. Yeah, so basically, as you see, uh, initially it was just over 45%, uh, and immediately it went up, and then gradually uh, it was converging to the best possible solution, which is just over 66%. Okay, so this was my second example, uh, and uh, the point was, uh, you know, in mechanical engineering, quite frequently optimization is tied to finite element simulation. My point was, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, as long as you can set up your model in those uh, terms, which is you gotta have your objective, you gotta have your free parameters and design constraints, you can set it up and use optimization. I'll quickly show you yet another example, which is hose routing, okay? And uh, let me get that model. I'll just show you the setup and how it behaves, okay? So basically what I want in this model is I want to automatically route uh, this hose, which is to determine the, you know, the trajectory uh, based on the length. So the connectors are fixed in space, but depending on the length of the hose I use, uh, it will update and change the trajectory. So I'll show you how it works first. You see there's a hose length parameter. And this whole length can only come in standard values. So it's 600, 650, 700, etc. So let's see what happens if I select 650. You see, actually, optimization runs. And you can see how the shape of the holes changed. Let me change it again. You see how the shape changes? Does gain some iterations. I set it up maximum as uh, 100 iterations, but it's pretty close. Yeah. Okay. So, how is set up? Okay. I'm going to show you the optimization. Okay. And the optimization is a minimization. And what it does, it minimizes this value, which is length different, difference. And length different is determined as the difference between the standard length which is hose length and actual length. So the actual length is computed uh, using engineering language, uh, language function length. And um, I'm making the minimum uh, difference between the two and trying to minimize it. And uh, the optimized parameter is coordinate location of that point in the middle. Again, I just wanted to keep it simple. Now, how does it happen that actually the optimization fires every time I modify the standard length? Well, here's another thing, which is reaction, okay? You see there's a reaction, you create it using Knowledge Advisor Workbench, okay? And this reaction, here is what it does. This reaction fires when the whole length changes the value. And uh, what happens? Uh, I see there is a simple Visual Basic script. Very, very simple. It actually runs optimization automatically. So basically the logic is if the user goes in and changes the whole length, then reaction fires, and this reaction triggers optimization. So the optimization is run, and the route or trajectory of the hose is automatically adjusted uh, based on the uh, hose length. Okay, uh, I think that's uh, most of it. Uh, let me go back. And uh, so just to revisit, uh, when you talk about CATIA, uh, as some people put it, uh, if you have CATIA and uh, you only use it to create pads and pockets and maybe some surfaces, it's, it's like having a Ferrari and using it to drive to church and back. Uh, CATIA, you know, it offers the most complete suite of tools and workbenches for knowledge-based engineering. Uh, we've only seen product engineering optimizer. There's a lot more. 
So you can do virtual experiments in order to evaluate parameter interactions and make design predictions. And you can also do design optimization uh, by goal. Uh, that's all I wanted to show you guys today. Uh, if you want to get more information about offering, uh, what we offer as a company, we work in training solutions, software solutions, consulting services. And uh, if you're interested in the topics we've uh, seen today, uh, these are covered in training classes such as Knowledge Advisor, uh, Product Knowledge Template, and Product Engineering Optimizer. Uh, that's all, Karin.